stuff in there. Bye. See y'all later. <laughs> Yeah, so where did, where did we get the idea to, to go on a big neural expedition anyway? Uh, we, we were collecting a bunch of data and uh, people were sending data in and showing that there were zero pellets in Florida. Mm -hmm. And I was like, uh, I mean, cause you know, we had so many oh, right. in Texas. I was like, there's yeah. no way that they're finding zeros over there. What if we could go to every accessible place that we could get yeah. to and collect Nurdle sir, do a nurdle survey. I was all then, then you know that automatically gets every state on board, mm -hmm. and we can meet with communities all along the way to get them to start sampling in those areas. So a nurdle is a small plastic pellet. Nurdles are actually the raw material to everything that we have that is plastic. So these pellets are made and then shipped all over the world to factories that then melt them down to make them into water bottles, sunglasses, you know, all the different products that we use on a daily basis. And so uh, how nurdles get into the environment is whenever they're being onloaded or offloaded from the factory, the little bit spills on the ground, they put them onto rail cars or trucks or putting them onto ships, they fall out on the ground. Even during transportation, they can fly out and then wash up on our beaches. So this is Nurdle Patrol's first stop here. We're at uh, Cox Creek on 35. Now that's a lot of Nurdles. Nurdle survey of the trip. I don't know how many ferries we went over. <clears throat> we must have gone over four or five different ferries. This was our first training program. We actually had some folks that came out to do surveys with us. So we weren't by ourselves. That was Texas, and so we were just about to leave the state of Texas. Well, buddy. Of course, when we get to Louisiana, oh, yeah. <laughs> we see an alligator. Oh yeah, a few of them. A few alligators. <laughs> <laughs> and we actually found a lot of pellets in Louisiana also. Louisiana has a lot of factories right behind Texas. I mean, Texas has the most. Mm -hmm. And then you go to Louisiana, they got the second highest in the Gulf of Mexico. So, uh, as you'd expect, there's a lot of pellets there, too. Seven, three, four, four. Four, yeah, we had this uh, data sheet so we could keep track of all the places we went and all the nurdles we collected. Yeah, Grand Isle, we found all these uh, styrofoam pellets scattered. I mean, hundreds of thousands of styrofoam pellets.
feel like a zombie sometimes. Yeah, that was cool. So the, the sand started getting real white right around that area. Yeah, all the small roads we went down to get to the different areas. This right here is. This was uh, the first place where we did a presentation called Grand Bay Reserve and uh, it's in Mississippi and we had a huge turnout. Uh, there was probably 60 people at this place and we set up a little uh, swimming pool with sand and nurdles in it and um, people could come up and they could train their eye to what a nurdle was. Um, it really, uh, I think, gave them the confidence for whenever they go up to the river, the lake, or up on the shoreline of the beach, they could actually find a pellet themselves. We do have a training video, and if you go to our Facebook page. And it, what was really cool about it is people had a lot of good feedback. They were real interested in what nurdles were, uh, why they were showing up on their beach, and then, you know, what could they do about it. And so they actually, uh, this reserve is still collecting data. They've been sending data in monthly. <laughs> A lot of people were on the beaches when we got to uh, a little bit more crowded beaches, they would ask what we were doing. And that was a great opportunity to, to to just tell them everything, where they come from, what they're used for, and just bring a little bit more awareness, one person, one beachgoer at a time. We would uh, start talking to people, and people were like, oh, I've seen those before. I thought they were fish eggs, or I thought they were seeds, or sargasm bulbs. You know, people yeah. have seen them before, but they just thought they were something natural. And that really goes down to what part of the problem is because animals think that you know this is a food source they think they're seeds or fish eggs or something like that that they ought to be eating mm -hmm. when in reality you know there's no nutritional value to these they eat them and they can clog their intestinal tract and then you know with that they could starve to death and so that's that's you know wildlife impacts is one of the biggest things that we're concerned about Pensacola Beach, yeah. beautiful sand. Even in Pensacola, we were. This was the last place we found pellets until we made it around to uh, close oh, to yeah. the Florida Keys. I mean, we found no pellets from from here on. And, and Florida has very few manufacturers. And uh, they, actually, Pensacola is the place that they have. That was one of our questions. I think we had it was, where are the currents and the winds taking these nurdles? Mm -hmm. Uh, we knew kind of where the manufacturing of them was, but timing of the year and the prevailing winds and... Oh yeah, so the hurricanes just, um, they take everything that's in the ocean and everything that's on land because of the rainfall and move it around. And so the, uh, we've actually got data coming in from that part of Florida um, on the west coast that people are finding nurdles over there. The state agencies that are supposed to regulate these manufacturing facilities, uh, they don't have the manpower to do it. So it's coming down to the citizens going out, collecting the data, notifying the state agencies when there's a problem. And so, you know, having this many people show up at one setting and one training is, uh, is key to the success of Myrtle Patrol. Now here, when we got to the west coast of Florida, uh, the sun coming up, the white beaches, there was hardly any plastic on the beach. I mean, uh, hardly anything on the beach whatsoever. Uh, actually made me kind of want to move there. Yeah. <laughs> Again. <right>. Okay. Again. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Thank you.
So here we're down in Rookery Bay Reserve and we gave a presentation. Uh, Rookery Bay Reserve is down in around the Naples area. Uh, there's actually very few pellets. Uh, we did find one pellet uh, around on the beach down there. There is the 10,000 Islands, bunch of mangroves. It's actually harder to go and sample. And so when we got to the Florida Keys, the first place we stopped, uh, it was at a boat ramp. And I remember we parked and we oh, got yeah. out and um, we just started getting into all the, the mangled up oh, yeah. trees. <laughs> We and, like and, we and we found some, and we hadn't found any in, in days, you know, on the west coast of Florida. So to be able to find them, I was all, we got nurdles over here. And so we just got in there and started grabbing it. Yeah, once Jace found a few nurdles, I was like, it's on now, I know they're here. You know, he's, <laughs> he's actually really good at finding them. I've, our numbers are pretty similar uh, most of the time, but you know, Jace has always had a couple extra ones. Oh yeah, I got one. These are tarpon coming up I was like, and grabbing fish. <laughs> this is Robbie's Pier. It's famous oh, yeah, for putting in, uh, you can feed the tarpon, and they're like six foot tarpon coming up. So this is the dry tortugas. This was an amazing experience. You're actually not supposed to take anything from here, but we figured we were picking up trash, right? Nurdles yeah. are trash. <laughs> we, we actually found nurdles on this island. We actually did a little swimming and stuff there too. Yeah. Uh, you know. That was the first time we did go swimming. We were, cause we were all business. Uh, the first all oh, up until the last day of the trip, this is the, where we ended. And, this uh, was the first pellet we found yeah. here, and I remember <laughs> when we found this, it was like in paradise they have plastic pellets, you know? Right. Oh man. Yeah. Look, and and all the tourists were walking around like, what are these? They're like, there's this beautiful beach here, and we're digging around right, in the in all the uh, dead seagrass <laughs> on the beach. Uh, yeah, we probably looked a little strange. So our last um, survey that we did on the way home, we're like, well, let's stop on the Mississippi River just to see. We didn't stop right. on the way there. Let's stop on the way back and just see if we find something. And this was in Baton Rouge. We stopped under the bridge. Sure enough, there were so many pellets under there. It was ridiculous. And, and the river was up really high. Uh, yeah, it was, I think I looked it up. It was like over a million cubic feet per second. I think. Yeah. 1.4 million, I think, at that, so that week. So there's a ton of water it coming through. It was an incredible amount of water. It was in either in flood stage or, or close to it. And so we didn't have to walk far, and they, we just found pellets mm -hmm. all next to the water. I mean, they, they were everywhere in there. So. I mean, I think that's an important for people to know. It's like, you know, it's, this isn't just a beach thing, but this goes up the river and, and mm -hmm. what that river drains 40% of the US. And so yeah. these pellets really could be coming from anywhere up there. And yeah. that means anyone can be collecting samples, you know, doing nurdle yeah. surveys, even up uh, way up into the middle of the country. So we ended up going 3,000 miles oh, yeah. in a 10-day period. So, hey, we, we got a cheers. Yeah. We got a cheers to that. That was a good trip. Yeah. <laughs> you, to the Nurdle Expedition. To the Nurdle, the Nurdle Expedition. Expedition. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs>
And I'm thinking, and now I'm thinking about, okay, what's what's our next Nerdle expedition? And so I think our Nerdle yeah. next Nerdle expedition ought to be the Great River Road, which is going oh. up the entire Mississippi River. Ooh, and uh, yeah. I think we can do that one in probably ten days. It sounds like smoking. <laughs> a, it sounds like smoking a bandit or something. <laughs> I think we could do that. And so uh, we've actually been able to expand beyond the Gulf of Mexico, and now we're up in the Great Lakes, wow. uh, east and west coast, and up the Mississippi River, wow. and we're creating these nurdle kits that we're sending out to groups all over the country to start up their own nurdle patrol. And so wow. now it's not just you know uh, 20 different organizations that are um, collecting data and stuff like that, but now we're looking at. Uh, possibly hundreds of organizations that are going to be collecting data over the next few years uh, all around the country, which gives us a bigger picture of what's going on mm -hmm. and how we can change policy in each one of those states to prevent those pellets from getting into the environment. I've lived long day, I've been moving along, singing my song, running around, ain't nothing wrong, oh, 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 I live long day. And then Once we got to the keys, and we started trying those conch fritters. Every place we'd go in, it was like conch fritter, conch fritter. Yeah. <laughs> and we eventually found really good conch fritters uh, yeah. and oysters. Oh, yeah. And in Louisiana, we got boudin balls. Yes. Which uh, blew my oh, mind away. Man. I'd never yeah. had that before. But I know that from now on, every time I'm driving through there, I'm getting some boudin balls. Boudin balls. <laughs>